Here's a video on how to make a NPC visible and invisible and creating them from two different techniques, scripting and the nopes commands, which are right here. These commands right here, I'm going to go through those first, some of those at least, and how you can use them to create NPCs. So what we have here, we have this guy, and he will cl clone an NPC, just clicking on that dialog, and he clones that guy back there, just using the command in his dialog right here. And it's under the option, and there it is, nopes, clone, spawn, and he's in the number one spawn, uh, server tab, and that's what, uh, that's the position there, there he goes, okay, so. And over here, this guy in his dialog, he has, we'll just look at that real quick, this, whoops, this right here, the Nopes NPC uh, delete. So he can delete himself, it gives his own name there, so he'd die right there. So that's pretty simple. And instead of cloning, you can also just create one. Uh, from scratch, that's a little trickier because you have to do the uh, execute command here, execute at player, and then you give some coordinates and then that will run this command as if it was at that position because the create command doesn't take coordinates, but you can just create a NPC by any name. So, um, just create, and he creates them over here. It's kind of stuck in the wall there. And then last but not least, this guy can just delete that guy by just uh, giving his name. The same as this guy gave his own name, that guy can give somebody else's name. And so, that's how you do it with the commands. Now then, scripting, um, you can do it with the dialog, and we just have this simple dialog option function here. And it says if the player has read this dialog, um, then you can unread it, because then you can use it again. Uh, and then it checks for if slot 1 was selected, or I mean slot 0 was selected, or slot one, which is actually the option one or option two. So we'll take a look at that real quick. That is, uh, let's see what dialogue. Here we go. So that's this one right here. So option one, as you see, is which is zero, is visible. Number two is invisible. So just depending on which one is selected, the script will recognize that and he will go invisible. Click on him again and make him visible. Now then, this guy has the exact same script in him, and I'll show you why it's important to make sure you test for the dialogue first, okay? Because if you don't, um, in this case, oops, in this case, I have this first dialog, and it has two options also. So if you didn't check for the, um, if you didn't check for which dialog it was, this is, this is not dialog 8, but if I sit, hit choose vis visibility, it will go to dialog 8, and then I can make them invisible. So if I didn't check for the visibility, or the dialog, uh, number, I could, I, if I hit this, he would go invisible, but he doesn't. You see, if I took that line out of there, because this is number two, is the same as this other one is, is the number two option. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, so, uh, storm coming in. So, right here, yes. So, if I didn't check for that, dialog eight, but I have this before script here, it would 
think that this is number two also. So that's one little tip there. Now this guy here, he makes this guy invisible here. So how does he do it? I mean, this is the exact, almost the exact same script, but what I've done here is this guy tells this world variable his name. Event.npc is his computer name, and I, I link that to a variable under his name, and I put that in a world variable that this guy can read in then. And so I just modified the, the original script slightly and made other NPC equal to this and then other NPC dot display set visibility either true or false so that's what happens there um, okay now then you set them up in quests and dialogues to make a little routine here I have one where I use commands and one where I use scripting and you can see the difference here uh, although scripting is a lot more flexible, uh, commands can be simpler in some ways. <laughs> so um, let's just run through it here. This guy says, can you get me some wood for my tunnel? You say, okay. And then this guy appears over here. He was invisible. And you can click on him. Here's some wood. If you say no, he takes it back. If you say yes, he'll give you some wood. Okay. And he goes invisible. Then I come over here click on him, completes the quest, and he gives me some gold. Okay, that's all done with commands, and this guy is invisible here. You can see he's there because he's coming up with the chat there, but his dialogue is not active. So what we have going on here is this guy has this dialogue right here, and he runs this command which reads this dialogue on the acting player, number five, there and also he runs a command here to make William visible true okay so he does those two things okay he reads this dialogue which um, this dialogue has the availability option after so this dialogue is over in this guy here that is his dialogue and as you can see, that dialogue, um, where are we here? That dialogue, yes, it goes to number two, okay. If he says no, it takes the log back, but then right here, it gives him a log. So it will give him a log, then if he says no, it'll take him back. If not, it will go to number five. And under that one, we have here, it makes him uh, invisible. And when he says OK, it unreads that dialogue, which makes his initial dialogue available. So it won't be available until the other guy unreads or reads it. So it's unread. So for this one, if you can follow that. So that's how that works. It's pretty nice. It works really easily once you get the hang of availability of dialogues and stuff like that. And it's repeatable here. See if I say no, he took the wood away. Yes, I can go back. Yes, okay. He goes invisible. And, and I get more gold. Okay. So, okay, here's another example. And this one is using quests and visibility with scripting and so what we have here I'll just run through it and then I'll show you how it works it's uh, similar to the other one but let's just show you how it works could you get me some supplies from Lampton yes you get the quest Lampton over here becomes visible now she was invisible click on her say give this to Lampton I get some wood she goes invisible over here thank you for the supplies and I get some emeralds so, uh, 
this also has a little bit more complicated dialogue structure. If I say no, it just goes back. If I say yes, and then come over here, and say no to her, that actually removes the quest, and there's no quest in my dialogue. That would be a little more complex to do with the other system. You would have to have many more layers of dialogue to do it that way. So um, this makes that part of it a little more simple. And also this one, when I say yes, and I get the quest, if I click on her again, she says you need to get supplies from, from Lampton. She doesn't go through the initial dialogue like this guy does here. He will always say the same thing, even though he only gives the quest once. So um, that's the way that works. So how this works is it's fairly straightforward, although she has three dialogues here and this one is always available but the way these dialogues work it will come down here and find the first one that is available so if this one is available it will run that one if that one's not available it'll run this one and if that one's not available then it'll run this one so this is the first dialogue 3a 3b and then 1a so if you look at those uh, 3a is thank you for your supplies, would you like a reward? That's the last dialogue. So, although it's the first one here, so, whoops, let me just go back to the dialogues again. And this one is the first one, although it's the last one over there. So. That one is always available, okay? So this one is available after that one, okay? So that's why that one gets run next. And then this one is available after 2A, which is Lampton's dialogue. So that's how that works. Um, and over here, she just has that 1 to A. And so what's important here is the dialogue numbers as far as um, scripting is concerned. So that's 19, 23, 20, 21. Okay. So that's how this all kind of comes together here. Um, once again, we have this uh, sup this uh, supply NPC is giving the name to a world uh, variable, like those other ones that did. And here, though, but so if it reads the dialog, it will unread these two dialogs. Then, if I pick the first option, it will give me a log and then set it invisible. If not, if I pick no, it will. Uh, remove the quest and then unread dialogue 20 and then go invisible. So, and that basically resets everything when I remove that dialogue and unread that one, which takes me back to the initial state. Um, and over here, this uh, just has the dialogue option, and what it does is it gets that world variable and that's how it turns the visibility on and off just like in the other examples but then we also have this dialogue 21 if that's read uh, then I remove the logs this NPC removes the logs and unreads the 20 which resets it again to the original state and the dialogue 21 would be the one would be knowing that I had read that dialogue over there, so that dialogue 21 is going to be, uh, it's going to be, let me think, uh, this one right here, I think, no, 20, 21, 3A, yes, that's going to be, yeah, okay, that's the final dialogue, yes, mm -hmm. that's the final dialogue, and then that unreads yeah 
area. Twenty one, and that unreads twenty. Okay, yeah. It's kind of a little diff tricky to follow. Um, you have to kind of build these things up slowly. You can start your dialogues in any of these things, and then I see I found myself constantly moving these down because you want these to be available before. Um, this one is all, like I said, this one's always available, and then this one becomes available uh, before that, so that one is run before that. Once this is read, that's read, and that's read, and then it unreads it, and then it goes back down to this one again. So that's how that's done. Thanks for watching.